When I was a small child, I wanted to have a train of my own. I still want to have a train of my own. But when I was a small child, as a way of easing me into it, I guess, my parents, out of the kindness in their hearts, purchased when I was like maybe four or five years old, this lovely garden wagon and the garden wagon over there. And I believe that my dad did fix up a lawnmower or something and pull it with him, but I didn't like it. Too noisy. And also I couldn't reach the pedals of the lawnmower. But regardless, I wasn't ready for it. So, when I was a small child, I would pull these wagons around with children in them. I would haul around my cousins and my sister and my friends in this little old yellow wagon. I put a blanket on the bottom of it so that they didn't have to sit on this uncomfortableness. And the black one was my tender, this was my passenger wagon, and I was the engine, human-powered train. And it was enough to keep me happy. But then, in about 2010 or 2011, I kind of got in my mind that a lawnmower train would be something. So, now the kindness and the hearts, my wonderful parents built this, or really my, my dad did most of it, but um, they built this lovely lawnmower train for me, or lawnmower engine. Now obviously, we modeled this lawnmower train off of Tweetsie number 12, as it looked like when it was being taken care of by Scott McCloud. Now, the one issue with turning a lawnmower into a look like of a real train is that really there's not enough room to fit everything. The light's in the right place. The bell's not. Even the bell's normally on here. The smokestack's a nice tall one. Very accurate. As you can tell, this is a very accurate representation of Tweetsie. No sand dome. And the steam dome with the whistle on top. Close enough to Tweetsie number 12, right? No cab. Never actually got finished with the cab. Never even got started on the cab. But this was it. When I first, when everybody first finished this, I was going to have this look like number 12, and have my other lawnmower look like 190. And I was going to actually do a good job with that and turn this oil barrel into number 190. But never got finished with that, kind of fell out of fashion. Now obviously a train that's as high quality as this could not pull some common garden wagons. We would need some truly great consists to go along with it. So, in the year 2011, September, might have been October, we set about building a truly quality wagon that would be everything that I looked for in a wagon or a passenger car. Now, along with wanting to take over the world, one of the things that I most enjoy, or most wanted to do really, out of all the things I saw people do in real life, was hang off the steps of the passenger car. And with my old wagons, you could not do that. So, in 2011, I drew up a wagon design on paper and said, can we build this? And the end result was this. Now this wagon, when it was created, the goal was to make something that would make me happy. No matter how unrealistic it is, no matter how unsafe it is, but it makes me happy. And the reason it made me happy was that I could do this. Isn't that enough? Because that's what I always wanted to do, to hang off the side, to be like the Tweetsie Cowboys, to be like the conductor. And that's what I was able to do. But the actual sitting space for passengers on this wagon is exactly the same as the garden wagons on the other side of the barn. This is four feet from here to here, and it is 
two feet wide, and it is a little over six feet tall to the top of the roof. Now you may be saying to yourself, why would you build a two foot wide, six foot tall wagon? Well, we didn't at first. We built a two foot wide, seven foot tall wagon, and then it tipped over a lot. So we reduced the fall risk by shortening the roof. When we originally built it like this, I was short enough at the age of 12 to be able to stand up almost completely without bumping my head. Of course, now that's a lot harder. But after completing this wagon and it falling over a few times, we took the wheels off and put them on a gondola, which we built out of but mostly spare wood. Then, after building the gondola, we realized the lawnmower is three feet wide. Why should we limit ourselves by building two foot wide wagons? And that is when this came into being. This, we called it our Coach 5. Even though we had two garden wagons before it, and two of these wagons before it, so it was Coach 5, sort of. It was our fifth wagon. So it's right, it's accurate. It was meant to be. So when we constructed this wagon, built the steps like before, made it wider, but did not actually finish constructing it until not even now. The walls were added in the year 2014, April, when I suddenly had a bit of passion for the project. Up until that point, it was just a flat car with steps, but we got it this far. Never did finish a roof for it, mainly because, eh. But when it was finished in 2014, the lawnmower wasn't working very well anymore. And it was not really something that I wanted to deal with, fixing up. So, for many years, it sat idle. The last time I probably ran the whole consist was 2000, 2013 maybe. And while I let my lawnmower train fall apart, there was another who would surpass me in lawnmower trains. While I may have been the first to have a lawnmower train out of the delusional Tweetsie Rail fans, or the Tweetsie Foamers, I guess is more accurate. The one who's known as Benjamin Livingston, he would take lawnmower trains to a new height. The last time I actually talked to Benjamin Livingston for more than just a hey was in 2011. He had his Tweetsie 12, his Recycle 12 on display at Rail Fan Weekend, and I said, I have a lawnmower train. And I said that I want to make my other lawnmower look like number 190. Because he had his not a lawnmower train, just up as number 12. And he said something like, You make 190, I'll make number 12. And so that was the last we've talked to each other. Not because I held anything against him, because I don't have anything to hold against him. He's surpassed me. He has gone beyond what could what I thought could be done. He has made tens of dollars off of lawnmower trains. I think, well, he has one lawnmower train, as far as I'm aware. And then the other one is, like, super fancy. So in 2012, one year after me, he received his first lawnmower train and began redoing it. While I let my lawnmower train and consist rot away under a barn, let the tires deflate and get dry rotted, let the lawnmower battery go all, go all to crap, he built a business. He surpassed me. He did so many great things. He made children happy. He made families happy. He made himself happy. He made everybody happy. Meanwhile, I wallowed in misery and pain because I thought that I would get hired as an engineer or something crazy. And then I would be happy. But I realized that if even if I would have been hired as an engineer, it would not have made me happy. 
I would have to make my own way. Go where no one else has laid tracks before. And the only way I can do that is by fixing up my lawnmower train. Some people, who are slightly more delusional than me, say to themselves, I'm going to make a Y6B replica, full size, as my first project. And then they realize that that's unrealistic, so they'd rather restore some train that's stuck in a park as their first project. Which is not, not the most sane thing to do. So, unlike those people, I am not going to do a new build as my first project. I am not going to pick some train out of a park to restore it. I am not going to go to the New Hope Valley Railroad and try to restore their steam engine number 110, which I have an emotional connection to because it runs in a place which I would really like to take over. But that's another rant. I'm going to do what true men do. What true railroaders do. And that is, fix up my lawnmower train and restore it to its former glory.